Hey everybody, this is my 55 gallon T-bar tank and recently I noticed I had some white marks all over my Nubius and so after a little bit of investigation I decided that it could possibly be lime scale but that didn't make any sense because my water is notoriously soft. I've shot many, many, many videos about how soft my water is. And in fact, I have done some things to harden the water in this tank and a few others. I've been uh, tinkering around with adding different mineral stones and eggshells and poultry grid and so on and so forth. And so I thought maybe, you know, adding the stuff might have had some impact and then I'm actually getting some calcium deposits on the leaves, which is what lime scale is. And so I reached in and I attempted to rub the leaves a little bit to see if I could rub any of the calcium deposits off. And of course, the moment I touched the leaves, I knew exactly what it was. And it is the result of this and then the other rubber lip pleco I have in the tank, although I haven't seen that one for a little while, so you never know, it might not be in here anymore. But that's all it is. It's the scrape marks from the teeth. And I don't believe it's trying to eat the Anubius per se. I think it is just foraging for food and is scrounging and scraping to the point where it's really rubbing those leaves thin. And so I need to step up the diet for my um, off walks grazing fish in this tank by putting either some fresh veggies in here or maybe stepping up how many algae wafers I put in the tank. At any rate, I decided since I had done this stuff a while ago, I added um, to this tank, I added some wonder shells and then they dissolved pretty much in a day or two. I have done a few water changes since then. I've not put any back in, but I have sprinkled some handfuls of a product that is, is called mineral stones and it's meant to sort of accomplish the same thing to sort of mineralize your tank without really affecting your pH or anything. I've also sprinkled some or I put some um, poultry grit which is crushed coral not aragonite but regular old coral and crushed oyster shells and I've got a bag full of that a mesh bag of that in my filter my canister filter so the water is flowing through that the whole time. So I decided after all this time I would go ahead and check and see if my water hardness has been affected at all. And when I first checked, I got a result that I wrote off as zero degrees hardness, which is what my tap water is, which is what most of my tanks sit at. It's what all my tanks sit at. I don't know why I'm saying most. Well, my brackish tank doesn't, but that'll come into the story in a few minutes. So I got a test result of zero degrees hardness. Now the way you do these API tests for hardness is you take your water sample, you put one drop in, you mix it up, and then you look at the color. If it's one color, you know, that's what the test is supposed to start at, and then when it changes to another color, that's where you stop your test and you count each drop and if you used four drops then it's four degrees hardness. If you use five drops it's five degrees hardness, etc. So you're supposed to start with orange, you know, you drop your first drop in, it's supposed to turn orangish, and then when it changes to green, your test is complete, and that many drops is how many degrees hardness your water is. So first drop went in, looked kind of yellowy green to me, at least very yellowy. I put my second drop in, it still looks sort of pale, yellowish kind of color. I'm not great with distinguishing colors. I also know how the color of the light you're using can affect the color of what you're looking at. So I just, you know, to me it looks, I guess they're calling that green. It's certainly a yellowy color, you know. But yellow is kind of halfway between green and orange. So what I was sort of seeing is looking more greenish. Someone else might have seen is looking more orangish. So I tested the tank and again came up with what I was calling zero. So then I moved on. I said, you know what, let's test this tank over here because I did something different to this tank. This is my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank. And in this tank, you can still see a few little specks of white in the bottom. And I mean like the really small specks that are sort of down in the gravel. That is finely ground up or crushed up eggshells. I have a total of eight 
regular grade A large size hen's eggs crushed up and in this tank dissolving. I put four in and then maybe a few weeks later I put four more in and that's been, I don't know, I'll call it a month, six weeks, something like that. So I decided to test this tank and I got that same sort of, it looked yellow, but this one looked a little more yellowy orange. And I kept going and I kept going and it started to look more definitively orange. And then I got to the seventh drop and it sort of changed and it looked like this weird orangey green sort of color. I said, all right, you know, I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. So I then took some water out of my brackish tank here. Actually, I took some water out of my brackish reservoir because I just mixed up some brackish water today to do a water change on this tank. It desperately needs it. And I need to mix up some water beforehand in order to do that. So this is on my list of things to do today as well. But I tested a sample of brackish water, which I know has several degrees hardness. I don't know how many, but it's got a lot. And so I put a drop in that and it came out orange. No question. It was orange. And so I kept going and kept going and kept going. And finally, when I got up to about 40 drops, I decided I'm tired of wasting my drops. I've, you know, I found out what I needed to find out. I've got, you know, I know what orange looks like now. So I tested my 29-gallon miscellaneous tank again. And I got the same sort of result. I wasn't satisfied that it was orange but it certainly seemed to turn oranger and oranger and then change to green on that seventh drop. And so what I finally did was I took some of my tap water and I used that as a control because I know my tap water has zero degrees hardness. I run it through a softening system that takes all the hardness out of it. I know that it's zero degrees hardness and if that failed me, I've got RO water and was gonna to resort to that, but I didn't need to. When I put the drop in my uh, test vial of tap water that came out that same sort of yellowy greenish kind of color but not it looked more greenish I then put a second drop in and it was definitely a greenish yellow sort of color I then went back and I took some more uh, water out of my t-bar tank here and we did the test again and this time I had the tap water to compare it to so when I put the first drop in, I looked at it and I could clearly see while it still looked a very yellowy color to me, it was definitely leaning more towards the side of being orange than green. My tap water had a very yellowy green look. This tank suddenly now that I had something to compare it to had a very yellowy orange look. So as I started adding drops, shaking it up, checking the color, adding another drop, it never really got orange, but the sort of yellowy orange distinctly sort of became a greenish yellow color on the fourth drop. I did the test three times. All three times, it was the fourth drop that I noticed the color shift. It was not a huge color shift, though, but it was distinct. It very clearly went from a yellowy orange color to a yellowy green color. And so, I find that really interesting. First of all, what that tells me about the tanks is that I have been adding calcium and magnesium, or at the very least calcium, into this tank. It's not a lot, but I didn't want to put a lot in here. I just wanted to put some in here. So, that goal has been achieved, and I'm happy for that. I am a little still, con still a little concerned about this snail we see back here. That's supposed to be a black mystery snail. I thought it was dead, but it's not, apparently. And its shell just looks terrible. And that's the reason I want to put some calcium in the water is for this snail. Now, I do also have some wood in this tank. And tannins released by either the wood or by the root masses on my plants in here, any tannins, doesn't matter where they come from, it's tannic acid, the tannins will actually break down. I don't know how it works, I don't know the chemistry behind it, but it does something to the calcium in the tank and actually softens the water. So I need to be able to put enough in there that I stay ahead of how fast the tank is sort of re-softening it. And I've achieved that. I wanted to get just a little bit, and apparently I have. Now, 
The other thing I find interesting is that this tank over here has very clearly seven degrees hardness. It, it, both times it was very noticeably orange, changed very noticeably to green on that seventh drop. So I feel confident calling this seven degrees hardness in this tank. And this tank has nothing more than crushed eggshells. I never put any of those mineral stones. I never did any of the poultry grit, nothing. All it is is eggshells. And I raised the hardness fairly significantly. So that to me seems like a quick fix that's pretty effective and when I say quick I mean shift it over the period of a month or so you're not gonna you know I'm not talking about pouring a solution in the tank and changing the water hardness during a water change but if you want to gradually add some calcium and magnesium to your water crushed eggshells seem to be a good way to do it I didn't do anything special I rinsed them in really hot water I did not boil them but I rinsed them in really hot water and then I crushed them up and crushed them up and crushed them up and ran water through it and I basically did the way you would prospect for gold like panning for gold I would swash the water out and swash out all of the um, membrane that was getting broken up and torn up while all of the heavier shells sank to the bottom and then I would put fresh water in it and I would do the same thing. I'd grind it up and grind it up and grind it up with my fingers. I'd pour off all of the water that had all of the membranes floating in it. And I did that until I was satisfied that I had pretty much a big pile of just ground up eggshell and very, very little of the membrane left. And I'm sure by then there was no actual egg material or anything left. Uh, again, I did this all in very hot water, not boiling, but very hot water. I was doing this with my fingers, not any kind of mechanical device. And I've got seven degrees hardness in this tank already. That is a significant result. I'm really happy to see that. The final point I want to make, and I want to drive this one home to anybody who's doing these kinds of tests and using these different testing equipment, they can be difficult to read sometimes. I've gone around and around trying to figure out exactly what shade of red my nitrate tests are. I'm sure we all have. But what I found interesting about this test is... If I've got 7 degrees hardness versus 4 degrees hardness, why doesn't it show me a solid orange right up until it shows me green? You know, the, the test barely registered as showing orange. Now, if you've got a tank where you're looking to see the difference between do I have 15 degrees hardness or do I have 25 degrees hardness, you're probably going to see a really solid orange result as soon as you take your first, you know, you put your first drop in there, you're going to see an orange result. But if you're trying to see whether you've got three degrees hardness or no hardness or five degrees hardness, you know, how soft is my water? You're talking about some really subtle changes in color. So it's not a bad idea when you do these little tests to use control tests if you can, if you've got distilled water or you know just buy a bottle of distilled water from the grocery store or something for 99 cents um, if you don't have an RO system or something and then you can just do a simple test you know this is zero degrees hardness so this is what no hardness looks like this is the yellow of the yellow and then you can go from there and that's what I had to do to really determine that I was getting some uh, mineral dissolution in this tank. I, I thought it had zero when I first checked it. I twice checked it and had dismissed it as I'm not getting any hardness. And that just didn't sit right with me. You, you can't, you know, I've got this stuff that I know is dissolving into the tank. It should have some impact. And I was getting what I thought was none. I was still showing what I thought was zero degrees hardness. Now, I'm not going to get into wasting my time about explaining why, or I'm, I won't get into explaining why I didn't waste my time testing for total dissolved solids or electrical conductivity or anything like that. Um, the total dissolved solids wouldn't have told me anything. It would have just told me that I've got stuff in the tank. It could be nitrates. It could be ammonia. It could be salts. It could be anything. You know, somebody could have spilled a bucket of sugar water in the tank and it could be sugar. It could be anything. So total dissolved solids didn't, you know, wasn't going to answer my questions I had about this tank. What I wanted to find out was, am I adding calcium and am, am I adding magnesium? And the way you find that out is you test for your water hardness. And that's what that is a measurement of. Your, your water hardness is a measurement of how much calcium and magnesium is in the water. So again, 
results achieved. I got this tank where I want it. I might actually throw a couple of eggshells in here. I wouldn't mind boosting it up a little bit higher. I don't think any of the fish in this tank are so soft water that a little bit more mineralization is going to hurt them. And at the same time, I've got those snails in the tank that I really want to do well. And they need calcium and magnesium in the water for their shells. So there you go so lastly i will say the reason we were sort of looking at this tank and lingering on it is it occurred to me i did not check this tank uh, or any of my others i have amended the um, substrate or put stuff in the filters of a few of my tanks and it would be interesting to see what they are so this is another tank that's going to get some work done on it today and i will probably check my water hardness while I'm working on this tank today so there will probably be some video about that coming up too so make sure you're subscribed and that way you won't miss that or anything else I got coming up you never know what it's going to be with me and then of course don't forget this one here is my 55 gallon Garami tank so thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed this and I will see you real soon on the next one